Hey guys, Joe from the Crazy New York Driver Show. Today is Friday, August 24th, 2012. And welcome to Back to School eBay and the New York Mets memorabilia video. Glad you could join me. Obviously we're going to talk about three things today. Three things I'm sure you want to know about. So let's get started right away. Over the last few videos I've made, a lot of you guys seem to really be interested in my collections and little anecdotes about me. And I must tell you, I thank you. I mean, it's great that you took an interest, but I always thought I was boring and my collections were boring, but apparently they're not. So I'm going to jump into some Mets memorabilia real quick and segue into eBay. Okay? Starting with the Mets. What I have here is an actual authentic New York Mets mug and by authentic you can tell it's authentic because it's got the hologram on the bottom. I do not know the year this is from or the history behind it but I do know it's from my brother's collection and I borrowed it for this video. Also I have something really rare. This is not your average Mets hat. This is an authentic one year only Mets home alternate hat. It's an MLB approved cap used only in the year 1991 for their home games. I have checked all over eBay. I cannot find this cap. It is very rare. It's got the authentic trademark in there. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that wish you had this Mets cap. I've got it, you don't. Okay? However, if one of you guys is very interested in it, you know what to do. PM me an offer. Next item on the agenda is very unusual. It's not from the Mets, but it's something very unusual. Remember back in the 80s, they had this cartoon character called Joe Camel? He was used to sell cigarettes. Now, the problem with Joe Camel is he was so widely popular that kids used to like him and kids thought smoking was cool, which is the wrong message to send to, to a kid or to anybody. So they were actually forced to cut the production of this character, Joe Camel. So anything with his image on it is worth something today. I'm going to show you what I've got here. I've got to back up for this. Look at this. I don't, know, I don't know how good you can see this on there. This is an authentic Joe Camel windbreaker. Okay? I don't know the exact year of this. I do not know that. Okay? But I know that it's highly collectible. Anything with Joe Camel on it is highly collectible. I'm not an expert with anything to do with smoking, but I know some of you guys probably are. So if you would give me some information on that, what you think it's worth, any history you have, that'd be great. As I said, I really want to use today's video to talk about eBay, so I'm going to segue into that now. Well, it's the end of the summer. Kids are going to be heading back to school. So let's say school's in session for us. Today I'll be giving you guys your first actual homework assignment. Please, please, please don't boo me. It's homework that's going to help all of us. And it's important because if it's done right, we're all going to be happy. As you know, in a two or three weeks, eBay on location is being held in Philly. I've talked about this before. What I'd like each of you to do in the comments section below is to write some, write your wish list or questions that you would like addressed by the powers that be at eBay. For instance, what I'm basically saying is, is there anything you would like me to ask them? Because guys, you know me. I'm not the kind of guy that's going to sit in the back row and pick my nose. That ain't me. I'm going to be talking to people face to face 
And I do believe sellers are going to be allowed to take the podium. If that's the case, I'm going up there. Okay? I want to know what questions you want me to ask or what positions you want me to state. Here are some of the things I have in mind. And you can tell me whether you agree or disagree or whatever. We have a week yet. Because I'll be making a video next Friday as normal. We can discuss it some more. But I'm going to say that all people, all bidders who do not pay for an item that they have agreed to buy should automatically receive a negative strike against them that's viewable by all. Not an unpaid item strike. I don't care about unpaid item strikes. They're nothing. We can't view them and, you know, they're just not a deterrent. I want everyone to be able to view when somebody doesn't pay for an item. Such as, if someone, let's say somebody does a buy it now on your item and doesn't pay, all right, you, unpay, you open the unpaid item case, they don't respond, whatever, they don't pay you. Either you or eBay themselves should give them an unpaid item strike. And to make it easier, I'd even say that eBay automatically leaves the following comment. Buyer did not complete the transaction. It's a generic comment with a nice big red dot next to it. And that counts as a negative. eBay can tell electronically whether you pay via ProPay or PayPal. It's a given. A deadbeat bidder has no excuse. They can't lie. They can't say, well, I paid by money order because, number one, it's against eBay rules to pay by money order. That's a given. All right? I can't remember the last time some, someone sent me a money order. I, years ago. You know? Anyone that doesn't pay should get a negative. A generic negative left by eBay. Buyer did not complete the transaction. What do you guys think of that idea? Because I'm, I'm assembling a master list that I'm going to bring with me. And that's definitely going to be on it. Okay? But I want to know more about what you guys think. You know, your ideas, because you guys got some really good ideas. Okay? I'm sure a lot of you guys have questions for PayPal. Okay? Put those PayPal questions down, too, because they're going to be good. I got a lot of questions for PayPal. You know? They need to afford seller's protection. I'm not talking about a chargeback when an item's not as described. If that's the case, fine. Give the guy his money back, but send that item back. All right? That, that's one thing. But when you let a guy keep the item and get his money back, that's fraud. That's obvious fraud. You are being an accomplice to fraud, and that is guilty in and of itself. Am I right or wrong? Okay. Let's discuss other things, too. As you know, eBay likes everybody to give free shipping sellers. And, you know, I just work it into the price of the item, free shipping. I mean, it's really a no-brainer. They're going to take their cut one way or the other. You might as well get the free five-star rating. Now, I've got a funny story I'd like to tell you guys regarding eBay. And this has happened to me so many times this year. And quite frankly, it's my fault. It's me not staying on top of things, but the end result is so ridiculously funny, okay? Now, it could happen with anything you sell, but I noticed it seems to happen with those toy trucks more than anything. It doesn't happen with hubcaps, hardly ever. And I think the reason is because when I buy my stuff, as you know, I buy in quantity. That's the way I've always done it. I buy in quantity. Let's just say 10 or 20 for argument's sake. All right? So I will list a quantity auction. And if it happens to be a Hess toy truck, because that's where I'm having the problem, I will list, for instance, 1986 Hess toy truck, new in box. Let's just say I'm, I'm asking $29.95, free shipping. All right, begin. I list the item. And let's say the first week, two people on eBay 
do a buy it now at the fixed price listing. I shipped them off their trucks. Now I'm down to eight. However, the mistake I commonly make is I also have a walk-in retail place, as you know. People come in and buy. I, through my own fault, and I blame nobody, I don't stay on top of things like I should. I can't be two places at one time. Ergo, things get sold and I don't know it. Or even if they tell me something's sold, I, you know, it goes out of my mind. And I'm here most of the time. Which is why it very rarely happens on the hubcap end. So the point of this story is, often people will buy Hess toy trucks and I will not take them out of my eBay inventory. Now you can see where I'm leading up to with this, right? And it's happened to me so many times this year. The last time it happened was about a month ago. I just keep forgetting to tell you this story. I had a listing that showed I had two toy trucks left. Oddly enough, within two days, two people do a buy it now. Bang, bang. All right? So I get the email saying the item sold. I go in the back room. I go over there. I go in the back room to get the trucks, and they're not there. I'm like, where are they, man? Then I check the sales book, and they've been sold locally. Oh, my God, I am so screwed now. I've got two eBayers who confirm to buy, and they're going to be pissed off. So what do I do? I get right on eBay, and I go on to my competition. Because I know at any time, usually, who's going to have these things. And occasionally, ham and eggers have them, too. So I quickly do some research, and sure enough, I see that they're available. But the problem is, if I buy them and I pay to have them shipped here, and then shipped to my customer, I'm actually going to lose money. But it's my fault. I can't blame anybody for this but me, because I'm not staying on top of the inventory. So all right. Big deal. I'll lose a couple of dollars. Maybe I'll learn. Maybe I'll stay more awake. I go to confirm buy it now, and I'm thinking to myself, do I really need to buy these two trucks? Because there are so many deadbeat bidders on eBay, maybe one of these guys won't pay. Maybe I should just buy one. And I'm not even comfortable with that. I said, I'm not buying anything. Let me get the money from these guys first. Now, tell me something. Two people bid, buy it now. They confirm to pay. Do you know four days go by, neither one pays? I couldn't make this up. I send both guys an unpaid item case. Do you know, I swear to God, not only did they not pay, they didn't even respond to the case. So, my point to you guys is, it happened to me so many times this year. People bid, they don't pay, and nothing ever comes of it. I've, I have to stay a little bit tighter on the inventory, I admit that. But it's just funny. It's just a laugh that, you know, you sell two items, you figure you got to have the two items to sell, and neither guy pays you. Isn't that funny? This, as I said, this happened a few times this year. And several months ago, and most recently a month ago, and I just kept forgetting to tell you. But I thought that would bring a smile to your face. As I said, it's the end of summer, kids are going back to school, and I'd like to reminisce a little now, if I may, since you guys love to hear some crazy New York driver stories. What kind of schooling did you guys have? I myself went to 12 years of Catholic school, K to eight, and then high school. For you guys out there who went to Catholic school, that was an experience in itself. When I was in grammar school, that was back in the 70s, times were a lot different. I mean, in my opinion, the 70s was a great time. Kids acted like kids. 
during the summertime, the block was always loaded with kids playing with other kids. That's the way it should be. Playing baseball, basketball, manhunt down the brook, going out to eat, going, going to the stores, going to the park. That's the way kids should be. It's not like that today. Today you see kids 15 years old in the mall holding their mother's hand, shopping. I swear to God, it's disgusting. Society today has changed for the worse. I really mean that. And I'm not saying all kids, because there's a lot of good kids out there, but it's just so different, you know? And another thing that's changed is credibility and, and values. When we were kids of the 70s, and I want you guys to chime in here, because most of you guys were also kids of the 70s, I think. Kid, the value of kids was quite low. I'm telling you. Kid, I mean, like, kids were looked on as, you know, a pain in the neck. Teachers were mean. Even cops were mean. Cops weren't friendly to kids back in the, in the day. They didn't come to your school and give you a lecture on drugs or any of that stuff. That stuff really didn't come into play into the 90s, the early 90s. So many things have changed over the years. I mean, if something really bad happened to a kid in the 70s, nobody believed them in school. Today, they can make up stories and get away with it and everybody believes them. So many teachers have gotten in trouble. Like, like a strict teacher, a guy who gives a lot of homework. Kids will make up a story about him. And this is documented. And then it'll come to pass that these kids had a grudge against the teacher because maybe he caught them cheating or he was a strict disciplinarian. It's crazy. It's really crazy because back... I remember when I was in grammar school back in the 70s, we had this teacher. And you know something? Maybe I won't relate that story. Because this, this is an all ages channel. And a lot of teenagers come in here and I'm not gonna relate that story. Not now anyway. Let me think of a better story I can tell you. Okay, I'll tell you one. Not really related to teachers, but this is just something funny. I've always, it's always, I've always scratched my head about it. When you guys were in high school, did you ever know a kid in your class that really didn't like you? I mean, there was no reason for the kid not to like you, but it's just one of those things where there was always a kid who broke your balls, who didn't like you for some reason. Well, I had this kid. He sat in front of me in homeroom. I won't say his name on here, but he sat in front of me in homeroom, and he always broke my balls. All right. Now, quite frankly, I wasn't fond of the kid myself, but I mean, not to the point that I break this kid's balls. And we were quite different, him and I. His old man owned a car dealership, and yes, they had money. I don't dispute that. Me, on the other hand, I had to walk around the street picking up hubcaps to make a living. I was a teenager and I had no money. And, you know, people are different. I wish that I would have, that wouldn't have been the case, but things are the way they are and you deal with it. So, he broke my balls a lot, but he saw me, okay, I guess apparently picking up caps one day and he started breaking my balls more. And I, I always didn't understand why this kid was breaking my balls. You know? Always with a snide comment, putting me down. And it didn't matter that he said it, but I just didn't understand why he said it. So one day, we go into Spanish class, which was second period. And the teacher was a brother. A brother is like a priest. One, one level under a priest. And he's calling on kids for an answer, and he happens to call on me. So this fat prick, allow me to call him that please, because that's what he was, a fat prick. This fat prick is on the other end of the room. He yells out, he don't yell it out, but he makes a negative comment about me. Like, what's the answer, Joey? And the teacher heard it. 
and the teacher said, Hey, Joe, John is jealous of you. And I'm thinking, he's jealous of me? Why would he want to be jealous of me? He's got no reason to. He comes from money. He don't have to go out on the road and pick up freaking hubcaps. But, I, to this day, I don't quite understand it, but I think the teacher was onto something. There was something about me that that kid was jealous of, and I don't know why. It's just one of those many high school stories that I'd like to impart to you. I'm sorry to get off the eBay track, but every now and then I like to tell you a personal story from when I was young, because I think you kind of enjoy them. <laughs> I hope you do. But anyway, I think I've rambled on enough for today. So, let's rehash. Comment below what you want me to address regarding eBay. What changes would you like to see, if any, and I'm sure there's plenty. I'm going to compile a list that I'm going to print out and bring with me. Anything you want me to discuss in next week's video, because I will be on next week as usual. And we'll finalize plans then. Okay? And if you have any comments about my little high school story, I think that was... I hope that brightened your day a little. Anyway, I'm Crazy New York Driver and you're not. Thanks for watching. Go out there and make it a good day. I need a drink of Gatorade because it is dry in here.